Then David said to Abathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he, capital H, means the Lord, answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. <laughs> uh, can I read that second verse again? So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. <laughs> oh, bless his name. Just for a few short moments, I want to talk to you about the season to pursue. The season to pursue. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us now. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you're my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in his presence. The season to Pursue. I don't know how long ago it, it was, but some some time ago I get this straight first. I spoke a message, I'm not even sure what scripture that I used at that particular time, but uh, I spoke a message and I used a a I shared a fable with you all and so in preparing for this morning I, I came across that fable again that I thought would be befitting for this message today and as many of you know what a fable is a fable is nothing more than a short story uh, which teaches us a moral lesson um, it's, it's, it's a story not founded on fact and, and, and it goes like this, once, once upon a time, the, uh, the devil himself decided to have a garage sale. And he, he did it because he wanted to clear out some of the old tools to make room for some new tools. And after he set up his wares, the, a man dropped by to see what the devil had. And lined up on a long table were all the tricks of the devil's trade. Each tool had a price tag on it. And in one corner was a shiny object labeled anger. And it had a price of $250 on it. And next to anger, uh, uh, it was a curved or carved out tool that was labeled laziness. Price tag on laziness was $380. And as the man searched the table, he found uh, another tool called criticism. The price on criticism was five hundreds. And then next to criticism was jealousy. And the price on jealousy was $630. And, and out of the corner of the man's eye, the, the man spotted a, a beat up tool with no price tag, with, with I'm sorry, with, with a price tag on it, but it was an old, beaten up old tool that didn't look worth nothing, but the price tag on this particular tool was $12,000. The man was curious and he asked the devil why, 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 why he would offer such a worn out piece of junk for such an exorbitant amount of money. And the devil answered him and said, it, it was expensive because I've used that tool so much. And the man said, what is it? What is it? What, 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 what is the tool? Then? And the devil, it is discouragement. Uh, it, it always works. The, the 
the devil said, it always works when nothing else will work. Discouragement works, and, and, and it's something here because there are some things the devil uses that causes our minds to drift away from the truth of God's word. One of the main things that he uses is he uses discouragement, and, 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 and when, when anger won't stop us, and when envy and lust can't find a foothold, discouragement always works. Discouragement is the devil's number one tool. Discouragement has always been a tool that has worked against people of color for many years. And just when you thought we had overcome our, our one racial setback after another, here comes something else, something else uh, 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 to set you and I back. Here, here comes uh, someone in the White House, someone in this or the other. Here comes someone else that's trying to set us back years. It's interesting here because discouragement has always been a tool that has worked against the people and, and, and especially the people of God. And just when you thought we had overcome the one racial thing after another, here comes something to set us back. This is, but this is the season to pursue. Oh, bless his name. This this is the season, and, and, and I, 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 I start, I had to catch myself yesterday when I had words in the service because I, I felt like preaching my sermon on yesterday, but this is not just a season, but this is the season. There's a difference between a season because a season could be all right and happen this particular time, but I've come to tell the people of God, and not, not just people of color, but I've come to tell the people of God, this is the season. Oh, uh, you, uh, you, you ought to touch your neighbor and say, this is the season. This is it. And then you ought to get in your mind, not just the season, but you ought to get in your mind that, that there's some promises that God made you and I, and it may have been three, four, five, six, ten years ago, but he sent me here today on February 24th, 2019 at 2460 Paris Avenue in the sanctuary of Lincolnia Tabernacle Christian Center where the pastor is the right Reverend Kenneth White. He sent me to tell you that this is the season. You ought to touch somebody and say, I, I got that. I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. There's some praise. There's some things on the agenda. There's some promises God made me. And now he's saying of God to tell me that this is the season. My God, you will not waste another season. But the Lord sent me to tell you, this is the season. I had to get that out, y'all, because I've been holding this all week long. I, I had to get it out. I had to get here. I had, I had to come and tell the people of God that your prayers have been heard. I'm almost done. And God has heard your heart cry. And he didn't send me to tell you this is a season. But he said, tell them this is the season. The one I promised them. The one I said I'm going to turn things around for them. This is the season where God said, I'll open doors and I'll make ways. I'll heal in your household. I'll heal your marriage. I'll get your children back in place. Somebody throw your head back and say, this is the season. Give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the season. This is, I ain't got nothing else for you today. This is the season. And when he said the season, he said to me, he said, listen, it's not just a season, but the season has some stuff attached to it. And the Lord began to show me my prayers and said that too and and that too and and that too and and that too and that 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 and that 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 and that 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 I come to tell somebody this is the season my god you your hands in this sanctuary you ought to give god glory and give god praise cuz this is the season I ain't going to miss another one I'm not going to miss another one 
my season to be healed, my season to be delivered, the season my children come back, the season your children come back. This is the, give God a praise right there. Well, hey, I don't have to say nothing else. I'm a shout off of that. How about that? I'm a shout off of that. I ain't waiting on a new car. I ain't waiting on a new house. All that's wrapped up in my season. And the Lord sent me to tell you this is the. This is the. This is the. And I'm telling y'all, this is the season. And if we miss it, it's because we wanted to miss it. And so. You better get it in while you can. Get it in while you can. Somebody just heard it. Somebody just got it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They are returning. They are coming back. They're going to serve the Lord. He told me to tell you this is the season. Come on, come on, come on. This is the season. It. <clears throat> we hear a lot about seasons. We hear a lot about seasons. A lot about seasons, but this one was different to me this time. This one came a different, it, it was so divine when it came to me that I had to sit back and I was relaxed. I, I felt like I was in the presence of the Lord. I felt a calmness in my spirit and the Lord kept reiterating, saying, tell them it's the season, not just a season, but the season. So, so y'all sit down for about five minutes, five minutes, and we're going to make this, this altar call. Listen, listen. Uh. <laughs> this is The season. The main weapon the enemy uses is he uses discouragement. Unrest in the house right now, and unrest in the family. All this unrest. And the Lord sent me to tell you, even in the midst of unrest, it will not change the season. Glory to God. Oh, I wish there was a praise in this house today. Elder Dwight exhorted us to praise. Praise team sang like I've never heard him sing before, exhorting us to praise. So here comes this discouragement. <laughs> and discouragement is nothing more than anything that makes us less confident. That's what discouragement is. Anything that makes you less confident. But my Bible says I can do because it's the season. <laughs> There's some things you're going to touch in the season that did not blossom for somebody else but will blossom for you because this is the season oh bless his name so therefore discouragement is anything that takes the courage out of you and when you're discouraged you 
you tend to make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, enough mistakes, you begin to feel like a failure. Can I take a moment uh, and, and, and encourage somebody who has already had some setbacks this year, just two months into the year? You may have failed at some things, but that doesn't make you a failure. As a matter of fact, you are about to cross over from, from failure to favor. And if I know my Bible correctly, the Bible is full of individuals who failed. Individuals who allowed discouragement to weaken. After failure came favor. As a matter of fact, one of the one that comes to mind, and you know about, about, about Peter, when Peter denied knowing Jesus, he, he really felt that he had failed because, uh, because Jesus told him beforehand that he would deny him three times before the rooster opened his mouth and crowed. Well, but Jesus saw something in Peter that that lets me know that even when you fail, there is enough favor to cover your failure. Ooh. Oh, can I preach a little bit today? Just, I ain't going to be up here long. I'm a, and I declare to you this afternoon, Peter was so discouraged that he felt God could not use him any longer. But the Bible says Jesus restored him from a place of failure and put him into a position of favor. There are us in here this, this morning, this afternoon that have made up our minds that I, I can't take another moment of failing because this is the season. It's the season to pursue. Can't be scared. It's the season to pursue. The story that we read in the scriptures. The Bible says that David is hiding from Saul. And he's hiding in the land of the Philistines. And, and it's something, and he, he's hiding in that land of the Philistines in, in a place called Ziglag. And, but he left Ziglag to go and fight another battle. While, while, while he was away, the Amalekites, came and, and burned his home down to the ground but but they but they did something else they they took his family captive <laughs> took his family captive when when David returns he sees the devastation and the Bible says he wept until he had no more power to cry anybody ever felt like I feel like I can't cry am I by myself today but Felt like I can't cry another tear. Been so discouraged, been so hurt, been so dejected and rejected that it feels I don't. It feels like I don't have a tear left in me. Well, it was interesting here because I I I I I feel like I've been commissioned to tell somebody it's the season. It's. And I know it seems like I, I know it seems like you're up against a, a wall right now, and 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 and. and but I declare to you, uh, and seems like I'm up against a wall year after year. But this evening or this afternoon, and from this moment on, encourage yourself. Every now and then, you'll hear me while I'm preaching. I'll say, "Preach, Bishop." I'm encouraging myself. But I declare, I declare, I declare, all of us have been through some things. But they took David's family and they took him captive. And when David returns, he sees all the devastation and the people. And the Bible says he wept until he could, had no more power to a cry. And, and sound like some of us, last, last year we cried because things just didn't seem to fall in our favor. You cried so much you didn't have enough tear left in you. Now there is, there is nothing wrong with crying but sometimes you have to realize when you have cried long enough about a situation you got to make up your mind I'm going to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> you got to make up your mind I'm, I'm, I'm not going to weep over this thing anymore. 
I'm not going to waste any more tears over this particular thing. And so, and, 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 and so God will not allow you to stay in that same frame of mind another year. David realized that the enemy had taken his family and now he had to lean on God for direction. Here it is. The Bible says David called Abathar the priest and told him to bring the ephod. And now the ephod was an apron that, uh, that the priests would wear to cover his clothing so that sacrificial blood would not get on his priestly garments. David realized he was about to go into a bloody battle because this involved his family. Anybody feel like I'm in a, I'm in a family battle? Oh, don't, don't play with me today. Is anybody feel like I'm, I'm in a family battle? I'm, 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 I, I hope you haven't given up on your grown children because it's a family battle and, and, and it's going to be a bloody battle. It's, it's, it's a bloody battle because it all has to do with the blood. <laughs> Tell somebody, say, it's a bloody battle. And you can't give up on your children. You can't give up on your grown son or your grown daughter. It's a bloody battle. You're going to have to do like the old saints. You're going to have to plead the blood. <laughs> You're going to have to believe that God can do anything but fail. You're going to have to believe that listen, if God can turn you around, he can turn Billy Bob and Susan Ann and all, he can turn all of them around. God sent me to tell you, this is the season. David realized he was going into a bloody battle because it involved his family. Let, let me pause here and, and serve the devil notice. It's one thing to bother my money. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's one thing to bother my money be, because I can make money. It's one thing to bother my car because I can, I can get a car fixed. But when you mess with my family. I don't care how many times we fall out with each other as a family. Don't mess with my family. And so they messed with David's family. David asked for the ephod because he knew the price of favor. Before David made a move that the Bible says, he inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue? after them. And if I pursue, shall I overtake them? <laughs> Be careful when you ask the answer a question. <laughs> shall I, if, if I go after them, will I be victorious? And God, somebody saying God, and God answered him and said, pursue. I want to tell every mother, every father in this place today, every grandfather, every grandmother, it's the year to pursue now. My, uh, you can't give up on them. It's the year. Listen, mama, oh, Johnny ain't doing right. I know he ain't living right. Oh, but I declare to you, if you realize this is the season of recovering, huh? Somebody's house is about to be recovered. Somebody's children are about to be recovered. Somebody's family is about to be recovered. They're going to take the last hit, and they're coming back to the Lord. They're going to take the last drink, and they're coming back to the Lord. Because the Lord sent me to tell you, this is the... Clap those hands and give God a praise right there. Shall I pursue after them, and will I overtake them? God answered him and said, pursue, for you shall surely, uh-oh, sounds like a setup to me. God said, you shall surely overtake them. Wait a minute. And without fail, your season of failing is over. It's not going to be, I'm taking it week by week, day by day. No, no, no. It is full recovery. Oh, somebody just missed it. Just missed it. 
It's full recovery. It's not a methadone bank. It's full recovery. God help me here today. Hallelujah. It's not you having to go here and there. It's full recovery. God said without fail, you will recover it all. Hallelujah. God said that without fail, you will recover it all. This must be what the writer meant when he said, and now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Uh, <laughs> oh, glory to God. I dare you to throw your head back and holler that name out that you know needs to be recovered. I dare you to throw your head back and just holler that name out. Holler that son's name out. Holler that daughter's name out. Holler that child's name. I dare you. I, I double dare you. I triple dare you to call out their name. And God said, you're going to recover and you're going to re it all. Their time in the wilderness is seasonal. They can't stay. They're not equipped to stay in the wilderness. <laughs> they can't stay. God is not only a God of restoration. Let me finish. Let me finish. But he's a God of, ab of abundance. Your failures were not a waste. It wasn't a waste of time. It was a time of preparation. You've been through a season. Now you're coming into the season. Clap those hands and stand it if you don't mind. Stand with me. Come on. It's the season. Come on, clap those hands and give God a praise if you will. It's the season to pursue. It's the season to pursue. It's the season to pursue. Lift those hands all over the sanctuary, right, right where you are. Lift them right here, right here, and within yourself. You don't have to holler the day now, but the ones you're praying for, the sons and daughters that have been caught in a fault, call their name to God. Because this is the season. You got to have a Rahab spirit now. Rahab made the soldiers, made the men of God promise her that they would spare her household when they came into the land. She even acknowledged, she said, I know you are men of God. This is a harlot now. But she made them promise her that when they came in to take the land, that they would spare her house. And the men responded to Rahab and said, everything that's in your house will be spared. They said that. Now, here's my sanctified imagination. Rahab started gathering every cousin, every mom and them. She started gathering up family. And I can only imagine how, how upset her father had to be with her, her becoming a harlot. But she went and got mom and dad, sisters and brothers, because the word from the Lord was everything in your house will be saved. People of God, let me tell you something. We're in a battle. We're in a battle for the souls of our loved ones. And when we're done running and jumping and praising God in the sanctuary, we got to go out of here and live a life before them. Uh, 
But I've come to destroy that tool that the enemy has called discouragement. The highest priced tool in his arsenal. Because the, the Bible tells me no weapon formed against me shall prosper. This is the season. This is the season to pursue. To go after it with all the energy you can muster up. And not just use words of, of God you said, but no, with authority. God, it's my son. <laughs> God, it's my daughter. Glory to God. Who has a call on her life. Haven't you taken notice of, of just how the enemy has been affecting your adult children? There's a call on their lives. There's an anointing that they don't even understand themselves. And God is saying to us, tell them my word will not return void. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. To God. Glory. My word shall not return void. Everything I've spoken over their lives. If this is the season for you, come on, meet me at the altar. If you have grasped this, these short words, meet me at this altar. I'm calling the serious folk to, to this altar now. The ones that are willing to stand in the gap. Ones that are willing to be a hedge. The enemy is taking all kinds of shots. And it's affecting those you've been praying for. He's been having an effect on them. But we've got to cover them. Because they're coming back one at a time. <laughs> they're coming back one Even if they've been in prison, God protects them. They're coming one at a time. One at a time. Fall on me. Anointing. the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Lift your voice and sing anointing, anointing, anointing. anointing. Come on, this is the season. Fall on me. One more time, we're going, to, we're going to pray. Come on, lift your voices, sing anointing. Anointing. Come on, you're asking for the power of God. Fall on me. Lift your voices, sing anointing. anointing. I need your anointing. Yes, I do. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Fall on me, anointing, fall on me. 
bow those heads with us at this altar. This is the season. This is the season. Told you on the first Sunday.